Welcome to Botany and Society with Laboratory. This is Bio 220 and 220L. This video is a welcome to the course and an introduction. We are going to go over the syllabus so you know how to navigate and succeed in this course. So first I'm going to show you how to access the syllabus and then we'll cover a variety of materials therein. Um, communication, so how to reach me. We'll talk about resources including the book and the Blackboard course management system. We'll talk about the content of the course itself. We will go over expectations for academic conduct. I will discuss activities and how you will be assessed. We will talk about the laboratory portion of the course. We will talk about accommodations and we will, I will show you where to find the schedule. So first, a quick introduction to me. Um, I am the instructor for both lecture and laboratory. My name is Dr. Ben Montgomery. I'm an ecologist and a botanist by training. My phone number on campus is 864-503-5764. My office is on the USC Upstate campus in the Smith Building and it's room 315. You can reach me by email at bmontgomery at uscupstate.edu and you can come see me in my office or you can call me in my office Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 12 to 2. You're welcome to try me at other times too and I will respond as I'm available. The book that we will be using throughout the course is pictured here. It is entitled Plants and People by J.D. Mouseth. This is the 2013 version, which I believe is the only one available. It's published by Jones and Bartlett. You'll notice that there's an optional companion website that you can purchase access to that includes some practice questions and a few activities. Um, that is optional. I will not require that you buy it. <clears throat> like all courses at USC Upstate, we are going to use Blackboard as a, our course management system. Um, there were just significant changes to the USC Upstate website, so I'm going to show you how to access Blackboard. From the USC Upstate main page, you'll see a banner at the top that looks like this. Click on the Quick Links menu, and that will open this menu down below and you can find Blackboard as your fourth choice down. When you're in Blackboard, you'll probably have a variety of courses listed. The two that you'll be looking for for this course are BioU220 and BioU220L for laboratory. You will need both of those tabs. Since we're here, I will point out as well that um, from the Quick Links link on the USC Upstate main page, you can find information technology. So if you are having trouble logging into Blackboard or accessing your email, for example, then this is a good place to find contact information for people who can help you with those problems. So if you log into Blackboard and you're successful, then you should be able to click on that first link for bio U220, and it will bring you to a page that looks like this. You can see there's a banner of various plant images across the top, just to remind you what page you are on, and then you should see this menu at the left-hand side of the page. If you do not see this menu, either make your web browser larger and it may appear, or hover your, your mouse over near the left margin of the page, and you should see an arrow appear somewhere in this vicinity, click that arrow, and this menu should appear. So the first link here is announcements. Obviously that's where you will find announcements that I post throughout the course. The second link is the syllabus. This is going to be general information about the course and how it's structured as well as policies and grades. The next link is going to have the actual schedule for what you are expected to read, watch, and do for each class. As we need the discussions tab, it will be here. There's a tools tab where you can find 
um, some additional resources as well as a help tab. So now we're going to go over the syllabus itself and we are going to do that by looking at it on the actual Blackboard page. So this is what it looked like more or less in the picture I just showed you. Let's click on syllabus and this is what you get. So my contact information is here. Um, I've already gone over that. When you email me, email me from your USC Upstate email or from whichever campus email is your official USC email address. That allows me to know who I'm talking with and so it will prevent me from accidentally revealing confidential information such as grades in an email to somebody who's not actually you. Um, you can talk to me by email is easiest, but you are welcome to phone. You can leave a voicemail, but it's hard for me to respond to voicemail because I then have to try to type your email address from your recording of it on voicemail. So oftentimes it's easier just to go straight to email. Um, I'll answer my phone as long as I'm not talking with another student during office hours. Um, if you want to meet by Skype or some alternative um, video conferencing technology, I'm happy to do so. We'll just have to set that up in advance and exchange usernames. I've already specified the book. Again, it's listed here. And I've specified that we're going to use Blackboard as our course management system. Remember the two tabs, one for lecture, one for laboratory. So let's now talk about the content of the course. Here is what I expect that you will get out of the course over the upcoming semester. Um, we're going to talk about, as you can see, a variety of different subjects. Um, we will talk about how plants allow for societal needs such as food and resource production, nutrient cycling, and pharmaceutical development. We will talk about sexual life cycles, including the roles of mitosis and meiosis in those life cycles, and how sexual life cycles allow individuals to create genetically variable offspring. Related to this, we're going to talk about genetics and how they explain patterns of trait inheritance. We'll focus on plants, but we'll point out the similarity in genetic processes between plants and animals, including humans. So what you learn about genetics will be applicable to um, humans as well. We will spend a lot of time talking about the structure and function of plant parts. This is going to include small things like cellular organelles, as well as tissues and organs. We will go over things like the structure of roots, stems, leaves, and flowers, and how will humans use plant tissues and organs for various um, human needs. We are going to talk about chemistry because chemistry is necessary to understand the cellular function of plants as well as how plants use water. So we're going to talk a bunch about the properties of water. We will also talk about the structure and function of different macromolecules including carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. And we'll talk about the roles of these different molecules in human nutrition. We're going to talk about what plants need to grow. So specifically, what nutrients do they require? And um, because plants require nutrients, we're going to talk about the importance of soil, fertilizer, and soil microbes in the growth of plants. We're going to talk about processes necessary for plants to grow and survive. These processes include photosynthesis, respiration, transpiration, which is the movement of water, and cell-cell communication. And we will relate these different processes to the importance of them for food production because that is a major way that humans use plants. We will also spend a fair amount of time talking about the characteristics of different types of plants. We'll talk about things like mosses, ferns, cone plants, also called gymnosperms, and flowering plants, which are called angiosperms. 
and we will trace the evolutionary history of these different plant lin lineages and see how new traits that appear reflect um, the evolutionary changes over time. We'll also talk about what we use these different plant groups for. We will talk about risks faced by plant communities from things like climate change and disease and how humans can respond or manage those risks. We'll also talk about agriculture, including the importance of agriculture for the growth and maintenance of human populations and contemporary issues in agriculture that we have some role to influence, both as gardeners, but also as consumers of agricultural goods. Okay, next I'm going to talk about expectations for academic conduct. So first, there's a website linked here that discusses several possible instances of academic misconduct with a focus on online courses. Things addressed in this video include, but are not limited to the following. First, sharing quiz or test questions or answers with other students in the current or previous semester or after you finish this course in subsequent semesters. That would be considered academic misconduct. Second, plagiarizing. And this is defined by the USC Upstate Library as, quote, using others' words or ideas without consistent, correctly formatted acknowledgement, end quote. So whenever you are doing a writing assignment, you need to do it in your own words. And if the information comes from a particular source, you have to make clear what that source is. If you are sharing information with other students, you need to be clear about who um, those other students are that you're sharing information with in the context of a writing assignment. In the laboratory portion of this course especially, you're going to be asked to take and to provide many digital images of the laboratory exercises. This is so we can see the results, as well as so I can verify that you are doing the work. Hence, digitally manipulating those images to make them appear as your own work when they were actually taken or created by someone else would be an instance of academic misconduct. So any instances of academic misconduct will be treated as such and addressed in a manner consistent with the USC academic conduct policy, which is linked here on the syllabus. Penalties for academic misconduct may include, but are not limited to, failure on the particular assignment, failure in the course, and an indication on your transcript that you were found guilty of academic misconduct in a course. I will say that in practice, almost all instances of academic misconduct can be avoided simply by clarifying with the instructor about whether or not something is allowed. So for example, whether or not you are allowed to work with another student on an assignment. So it is always better to have those conversations with me beforehand by phone or by email, then to find out afterwards that something wasn't acceptable. And in many cases, what you're asking for will, will probably be just fine. So please do contact me proactively rather than having to deal with a situation that arises later. Okay, next we're going to talk about the format of the course. This course is taught online in a partially synchronous format. So what does that mean? For the lecture portion of the course, which is what this video focuses on, there's going to be three sets of activities most weeks um, that don't have vacation days, and these will correspond to a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday schedule. Um, so assignments that are due will be due at 11.59 p.m. on the due date, so on usually a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, unless I specify otherwise. When I specify otherwise, it will typically be to extend the deadline for some reason. 
No material is strictly synchronous, meaning that you will never have to be at your computer at some specific time of day. I will not be doing live lectures. You will not have to be in whole class activities at any particular time, but you will have to keep up with this Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule for activities. You'll typically be able to do activities in advance, so if you don't want to be doing work on a Thursday or Friday, you could do those activities on a Tuesday or Wednesday of that week, for example. I will try to keep activities about posted about one week in advance, so you'll have about a week to complete most activities. Um, while we're talking about um, timing, I will point out that the final exam is going to have to be taken at a distributed learning center at one of the USC upstate campuses. So there's going to be exams throughout the course. This will apply to the final exam only. You will have to go to campus sometime while that testing center is open to take the final exam, which will be a two and a half or three hour time block. So please consider that now and make sure that you will be able to do that. All of the different um, University of South Carolina campuses have some sort of testing center where you will be able to take this exam. We'll talk about that a little bit more below. So textbook readings and lectures. So for most scheduled class days, you will be responsible for reading a selection from the textbook or from some other media source. And you will have to watch one or more online lectures. The material is going to overlap between the reading and lecture but some material is going to be unique to the reading or unique to the lecture. Thus, it's not sufficient to only do the readings or to only watch the lectures. I will provide you note-taking handouts to help you organize your learning and identify information that's important. I will not collect these, but I will consider them when writing exam questions. Thus, I would think about these as being a study guide, um, and they will be useful for you to complete. You will have daily quizzes. By daily, I mean corresponding to the Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule of the course. You should do the reading and watch the lecture, and then you should complete the daily quiz afterwards. At the end of the semester, assuming that you've taken all of the daily quizzes, I will drop the three lowest scores. That means if there's a blackboard problem or if something in life comes up and you just can't take it, then it will have minimal impact on your score. All of these daily quizzes together will account for 20% of your lecture grade. If you miss a daily quiz, then it will be scored as a zero. So it'll be important to take all of them or at least not miss more than three. And again, these will be due at 11.59 p.m. on the assigned day. You will have exams throughout the course. There are going to be three midterm exams, each worth 12% of the lecture grade, and a final exam that covers all course materials worth 22% of the lecture grade. And it's this final exam that must be taken in the proctored environment on the USC campus whether USC Upstate or somewhere else. If you are not a resident of South Carolina and therefore are unable to access any USC campus to take this exam, then we can make arrangements for you to take this exam at some other verified learning center in your region. But I will require that you notify me about this residency status within the first two weeks of the semester so we have time to make arrangements. Throughout the course there's going to be a variety of small activities related to lecture that you will need to complete. These will add up to about 22 percent of your lecture score. Again, these will be due at 11.59 on the day that they are listed on the syllabus, unless I note an extended deadline. 
Laboratory is a large portion of this course. It is required. The laboratory is worth 25% of your final grade. So this is a four credit course. One of those credits corresponds to laboratory. Three of them correspond to lecture. Um, and at the end of the semester, I will compute a weighted average of the two, and you will get only one grade on your transcript. I've already pointed out the separate laboratory tab on Blackboard, which you will need to watch for laboratory activities. And there is a separate laboratory syllabus, which can be found on the Bio220L website. So I will not talk about those specific activities here. This is just a reminder that you do need to be keeping up with those activities, and they do start immediately at the beginning of the semester. Late assignments. Generally, late assignments will not be accepted. However, I am willing to consider exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis, contingent on having documentation if there is a reasonable excuse. So examples of when I may accept late assignments would include documented sickness or a documented health emergency of you or an immediate family member, and I will usually ask for communication from a medical provider as the documentation. If other um, situations arise, you are welcome to contact me. I don't make any promises now, but it cannot hurt to ask. Okay, so many students require accommodations due to um, disabilities, and USC Upstate supports the ongoing development of an accessible university that embraces diversity through educational programming, services, resources and facilities that are usable by all members of the campus community. In keeping with university policy, any student with a disability who requests academic accommodations should contact Disability Services at 503-5199, that's an 864 area code, to arrange an appointment with a Disability Services staff member you should do this as early in the semester as possible, as accommodations are not provided retroactively. I strongly encourage you, if you have any disability that can be accommodated, I strongly encourage you to go ahead and do this. It's always better to have accommodations early than to start off the semester poorly and then have makeup work that you need to do. So the actual schedule of activities in the course is not included on the syllabus page. I'm going to show you now where that information is linked. In fact, one place it's linked is this link down here at the bottom. That will take you to the schedule. But you can also see the schedule over here under syllabus and the left-hand menu. And here you will find a day-by-day -day listing of all of the activities corresponding to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, as well as a short summary of the lab activities. To see details of the lab activities, you will have to go to the laboratory page on Blackboard. So this is just one last reminder that the final exam will need to be taken at a USC testing center and that if you require special accommodations or you are out of state, please let me know in the first two weeks of the semester. Laboratory, um, we've talked about a little bit. Please remember you need to be enrolled in both and you need to complete the activities in both. Those activities relate to lecture topics. There are usually multiple activities each week Activities start immediately. Because this is a botany course, you will be growing plants, and those plants need to be established in favorable growing conditions. So there are lab even though the first week of the semester is a short one, there are several things that you will need to do this week. 
so make sure you check both the lecture and laboratory Blackboard pages on a regular basis. Finally, I want to end with some advice on how to succeed in this course. First, keep up with the assigned schedule. Plan ahead for due dates if work or family activities or other classes are going to cause a conflict. Try to get that work done ahead of time. Second, the readings start immediately, so if you do not have the book, then go ahead and purchase it. It should be available for purchase at the USC Upstate Bookstore, but um, you also are probably familiar with other ways of getting the book through um, online sources, for example. So please do make sure that you purchase the book and are able to start the readings. Please check your email daily. Whenever I post an announcement to Blackboard, I will check the box that requests that announcement also be emailed to you. So if it's necessary to change the schedule or to provide clarification, that will happen by an announcement, and it will be easiest to find those by checking your email. Laboratory activities take time and planning ahead, so make sure that you have that time scheduled and make sure you look over the laboratory activities early in the week because there are some instances where you need to do something and then wait several hours or even overnight before you can do the second step. Finally, please contact me with questions. I am paid to be here to help you with the course and certainly to clarify when something is unclear. So I probably will not know it's unclear unless you do let me know. So I will appreciate it, um, and it will help your performance if you let me know when questions arise.